Time Warner Cable and Metro Sports presents Race and Boys TV with Scott Trailer and Kirk Elliott. A look at racing in the Midwest and around the country. Brought to you in part by McCarthy Chevrolet and RacingBoys.com. Welcome to Race and Boys TV, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet here on Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports. I'm Scott. He's Kirk. We are in front of Race and Boys HQ in lovely Independence, Missouri. And, Kirk, we've got three great guests this week. We've got John O'Neill Jr., plus his driver and his A-Mod, Nick Benninger, and a guy that nearly won the NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year in 1976, Terry Bivens. And John O'Neill, such a big star of racing. When you think of I-70 Speedway, you immediately think of John O'Neill Jr. He's no longer driving now. He's into promoting running Thunder Lake Speedway, which is located right across the street from Lakeside Speedway. And, of course, talking about his driver, Nick Benninger, still competing. John O'Neill's modified this year. We'll visit with him in the third segment. And... I'll tell you, Terry Bivens is about as interesting a character as you'll ever find in racing. Out of racing for about 30 years, he's back driving now for a number of years and, of course, competing on a regular basis in the B-Mod class out at Heartland Park, Topeka. All right, well, as we do each and every week here on Racing Boys TV, let's kick it off this week's Racing Highlights on Racing Boys TV. Friday night racing returned to Lakeside Speedway and Metro Sports factory stock feature was first up. Scotty Moore rolls to his second straight victory. Good, Mr. Good Sense, Tough Shed Camaro is running good the last few weeks. I made a change three weeks ago and I tell you what, it likes it. It likes the cushion, it likes it up top and it's running good. Well, I'm very proud of the car and my sponsors and everybody, we're doing good. During the intermission, B-Mod points leader Nick Newton's car erupts in a huge fire. No one was hurt, and Newton was able to step into a borrowed ride courtesy of Chris Littrell. But mechanical problems relegated him to 11th. Gene Claxton in the 42 battles a determined flying Mike Ryan in the 51, but the bottom was the quick way around as Claxton makes it two in a row and moves to within three points of the B-Mod points lead. Grand Nationals have not been short of intrigue and drama this season, and last week was no exception. Kelby Ostrander in the 3B roars to the outside around a lap car and races Darren Kling in the red 30. Watch these two go at it, with Kling holding the bottom and eventually taking command when Ostrander slid high. But in the waning laps, Kling makes contact with this lap car and spins it out. He has to go to the back on the restart, handing the lead and the win back to Ostrander, his third victory of 2012. Uh, well, I just kind of jumped. I usually like to run up top, and I jumped up there, and it was working good. And uh, Just continued on. About lap five, I lost all my brake. A little tough to do, but I went ahead and uh, stayed out there and luckily stayed out front, so that was easy to finish that way. Tim Carrick takes charge of the modified feature on lap five. Nick Benninger rallies from 15th to second before shredding a tire on the final lap. Kerry Davis has trouble and finishes 12th. Carrick scores his sixth win of the season as Cody Agler and Aaron Morant wind up second and third respectively. Saturday night action at BriggsAuto.com Speedway at Heartland Park, Topeka. Pure stock first up with Randall Schiffelbean in the 11 junior and Jesse Schatz in the 97 going at it. Shots goes around in turn two, leaving Schiffelbean a clear path to the checkered flag, his fourth straight and seventh overall. Curtis Drescher and the C4 led early in B-Mods. Terry Bivens and R.J. Edwards get locked together. 17, Jeremy Chambers running the high groove to perfection. Takes the lead off turn two and off he goes to his second win of the season as Drescher settles for runner-up. Ten-time factory stock winner Terry Schmidt draws the pole and has more than his hands full here. Steve Herrick in the 5K gets a piece of Schmidt's right rear, and on the following lap, Herrick lets Schmidt know just how much he didn't like it. Schmidt was done, and Herrick DQ'd. Zachary Henry takes advantage and motors on to a big win. You know me, uh, Terry Schmidt and Steve Herrick, we're all fighting for the same same uh, uh, real estate, and, you know, uh, we got into it a little bit, and then coming out of... Coming into three and four, I don't know what happened between them guys. Um, good race, uh, usually pretty clean racers, so I don't know. I'm hearing stuff, and, you know, I just, I'm happy I didn't get into it. A-Mod's wrapping up the evening with Cody Agler and Josh Eberhardt on the front row. On the initial start, Eberhardt gets the jump, but the yellow comes out, forcing a second original start. This time, Agler from the pole takes the lead on the hot, slick racetrack. 
Everhart and Tim Carrick are close behind, and Carrick eventually takes over second as Agler stretches the margin. But big trouble for Agler as he gets into the lap car of John Campson. The yellow comes out and the 77 goes to the rear. Carrick takes over and cruises on for a Lakeside Heartland Park weekend sweep. Yeah, that's about the first time in many. Uh, looks like uh, probably would have ran second to Cody if uh, lap car wouldn't have kind of gotten his line. So uh, he ended up bumping him and spun him out. And uh, that kind of gave me a line. But uh, we've been working at the cars down here trying to throw some at him so we can run one, two again like we did the night before Lakeside. But uh, Carl uh, Shryock Racing has been helping us out a buttload. So uh, that's, that's big help to us. Wild sprint car action Friday night at Valley Speedway. Kenny Potter leads the 20-car field to the green. For the second straight week, Joshua Stevens starts deep in the field and avoids big trouble with this spinning car. 81 Chad Shield starts outside front row and leads the whole way. That is until the final lap. Stevens charges from 17th to second and Cody Baker is right behind. Setting up for the final two corners, Stevens tries to get a run on the inside, can't do it. So he goes wide with Baker coming way outside. It's three abreast to the line and Stevens wins it. Baker is second and Shields not only loses the race and finishes third, but ends up with a wrecked race car. Certainly a disappointing night for Chad Shields, but a very joyous night for Joshua Stevens. Unbelievable finish. Saturday night at Valley Speedway, USRA modified main event. Shad Batter and Dennis Elliott on the front row with Matt Dotson in the 81 starting third. Elliott hugs the bottom as the others gain big momentum running high. Dotson powers by Elliott for the lead, and he won't give it up. Matt Dotson scores his first victory at Valley and second win of the weekend. Elliott is second, followed by Jim Moody, Trevor Hunt, and Shad Batter. Despite not running, Dean Willie still holds a commanding points lead. Well, there you have it this week's Racing Boys TV highlights. When we come back, we're going to visit with a guy that's had a lot of ups and downs, more ups than downs in his driving career. Now a promoter and car owner, I'm talking about John O'Neill Jr. joins Kirk and I on Racing Boys TV when we come back. Okay, let's choose up. I'll take Jamal and Tutal. You can have Chubbs and Skippy. Let's go. My ball. Okay. But you got skins. Not a good negotiator? You don't have to be a good negotiator at McCarthy Chevrolet. McCarthy guarantees the lowest prices on a new Chevy or we'll pay you $10,000. We guarantee there's no need to shop anyplace else. McCarthy Chevrolet, I-35 and Santa Fe, Olathe. Welcome back to Racing Boys TV, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet here on Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports. Scott Trailer out at Racing Boys HQ. Our next guest here on Racing Boys TV is a guy that's really had a fantastic driving career. John O'Neill Jr. has won a lot of races out at I-70 Speedway back in the day. You might remember the Jeff Klim, John O'Neill rivalry that they had out there. He won a lot of races in a modified in the early 90s at Lakeside Speedway. Well, we thought we'd talk to John O'Neill, now the promoter at Thunder Lake Speedway, the little go-kart track out by Lakeside Speedway, and talk to him also about being a car owner for Nick Benninger. We caught up with John O'Neill out at Thunder Lake just a little bit earlier. You know, my dad got me started. We had a uh, my very first race car was a factory stock and uh, you know a lot of his knowledge was about what that kind of car was and so I think that helped shorten my learning curve allowed me to get into a really competitive car right off the bat and where all I had to do was just learn how to race at that point. I-70 is one of those places that could re reach out and bite you and it didn't matter if you was a participant or if you was one of the, the front running drivers it didn't matter anybody was susceptible to a crash at any time. And, you know, I had two really bad ones out at I-70. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, bumps and bruises along the way. Uh, it, it's one of those things that, you know, it's just that kind of a track. A lot of people will say, you know, that's not a weekly racer's track. You know, it should be specials only because it's so expensive, it's so fast, and it's so dangerous. But that was the allure of I-70. I mean, we could all go race flat tracks anywhere. But who had a 31 degree banked uh, monster in their backyard? All of us drivers from Kansas City did. And, uh, and it's, uh, it, it was a fabulous place to race. It, it intimidated a lot of people. Talk to Matt Kenseth, you know, uh, McMurray, Boyer, and all the guys. You tell them, or you ask them the same question, they'll say I-70, definitely the speed of that track prepared them well. I-70 is going to be one of those special places that will always stay with me the rest of my life because when I was a kid growing up we used to watch I-70 Speedway races on Sunday mornings 
and on the TV. And as a kid, as I got older, and I'll never forget rolling into, you know, there I went out and uh, uh, watched an ASA race when it was still pavement, and then it went dirt racing. And we participated and went out there, and, and when I was a crewman for Aaron, we went out and raced at I-70. And all I said, man, if, if they ever come back to pavement, you know, I want to race here. Well, I got to race there when it was dirt. And it was nothing like what it was when it was pavement dirt. I think we probably ran around there in 23 second laps, 24 second laps. And then when we started pavement racing, we ran around there 16 and 17 second laps. And that's flat hole in the mill. That's about 130 mile per hour average. I miss driving, but I got one heck of a shoe in it right now that does pretty good. So uh, he makes it easy on me. He makes it easy on me. I will say one thing, I love racing and I miss racing. It's been a big part of my life and uh, I, I, I enjoyed uh, a couple weeks ago jumping in a, in a friend's car and just kind of helping him shake it down. You know, he, he allowed me to drive it for two weeks and it was good to get that adrenaline going. You know, I, I think it truly is a got sent uh, opportunity uh, to be able to give back to racing. Racing's given my family so much and to be able to, you know, to step in when Thunder Lake and all of our recording community needed it. And to be that person is an honor that the Fotovich family said, you know what, we want you to be the guy to keep it open. And they're a great family. They're going through some, some uh, health issues that they're battling. John Fotovich and his wife Donna started this place down here. And it's one of the most fabulous facilities for karting in the Midwest. And we're gonna continue to make improvements on it yearly. Uh, we're gonna try and continue to bring in corporate sponsors and just really try to focus on increasing the amount of exposure and awareness for, for karting as not only a sport, but a family sport. It's, it's all about moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, brothers and sisters. Uh, if you were to take a walk through the pits, everybody's friendly. They're cooking out, they're grilling, they're, there's a lot of camaraderie. And it's just a place you wanna be. And a lot of people don't know it and haven't been exposed to it yet. And I can tell you, it's a lot of fun. You ought to come out and see it if you haven't yet. We need to teach all these youngsters what the gas and brake is. We need to under, they need to understand what the flags are before they get there. They need to understand how to race in the groove and, and what, the, what the lights mean and, and how to learn how to pass. And they can do that right here starting at as young as age five. And I got them from five years old all the way up to 65. So there's no age limit. Anybody can come do it. It's just a, it's a great low cost way to get involved in this sport. And I, I tell everybody, that I speak to, this is just like racing on pavement. Even though it's got a dirt surface, the line, the setup, how the attention paid to the left side weight percentage, the adjustability of the carts, it's just like just like the old days racing it across the street at Lakeside. Well, there you have it, John O'Neill Jr. That guy, again, has done it all and has been a great ambassador to the local racing scene here in the Kansas City area. When we come back, we're gonna visit with Nick Benninger on Race of Boys TV. Okay, let's choose up. I'll take Jamal and Too Tall. You can have Chubbs and Skippy. Let's go. My ball. Okay. But you got skins. Not a good negotiator? You don't have to be a good negotiator at McCarthy Chevrolet. McCarthy guarantees the lowest prices on a new Chevy or we'll pay you $10,000. We guarantee there's no need to shop anyplace else. McCarthy Chevrolet, I-35 and Santa Fe, Olathe. Missouri State Fair Speedway roars back into life Sunday, August 19th for the 2012 Missouri State Championships. Join me, Brian Brown, driver of the Casey's General Store FVP Impact Signs, Awnings, and Wraps number 21 Sprint Car as ASCS Speedway Motors Warrior Region 360 Sprint Cars take to the historic half mile to race for the prestigious win. Drivers will battle it out during the final swing of the three nights for the Tompkins Industries Mo Can Shootout presented by Impact Signs, Awnings, and Wraps and Impact4800.com. Gates open at 4.30 with hot laps hitting the track at 5.30 and heat races starting at 6 o'clock. The ASCS Speedway Motors Warrior Region Sprints will also be joined by Lucas Oil MLRA Late Models and A Modifieds. One big show with three big classes. Don't miss a minute of the action. Adult admission is $18 with seniors and military $15 and kids 6 to 12 only $8. For tickets, visit MoStateFair.com or visit MissouriStateFairSpeedway.com for race information. 
Welcome back to Racing Boys TV on Metro Sports, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. Nick Benninger has been one of the top modified drivers at Lakeside Speedway for a number of years now, but most recently has been driving the Price Chopper number 15 modified, owned by John O'Neill Jr. Has yet to win here in 2012, but he's getting close. Uh, everything's been going going pretty good. You know, we've had some pretty good runs throughout the year. We've had a couple of setbacks. Um, uh, really just trying to work out a new car. We've got a new side biter chassis from Ryan Reuter up in Iowa. Um, just getting used to it, kind of getting getting going with it. Um, I think the end of the season is looking pretty good for us. We come out and do, we come out and give everything we've got every week. Um, I feel like a lot of times when you set goals, uh, depending on how, how high you set goals, it kind of sets yourself up for failure. But you know, you definitely have to, you definitely have to be coming into the end of the year thinking that we can get a couple, maybe three wins. Uh, out of the last, I think, nine races. So, I think we've got we've either got two or three second places out here, one or two third places. We've been pretty close. Uh, three weeks ago, um, the week before the USMTS, we were we were on second or we led for quite a while until Darren Fuqua got us, and uh, he got the win. But we've been we've been pretty close. I think we've uh, changed a little bit of stuff here lately. Hopefully, we made the car a little bit better. We haven't been able to put any laps on it, but uh, uh, hopefully, it'll be for the better. My dad started racing in 1990, uh, and obviously I was five years old. Uh, I went to the races my entire life. Just enjoyed it since day one, and as soon as I was old enough to race and dad gave me the opportunity, that's, that's what I did. We started out in factory stocks at Thunder Hill, ran a couple years there, uh, came to Lakeside in 2005 in a Grand National. Ran three years in that, and then we've been in modifieds ever since. We raced quite a bit at uh, Heartland Park there when we first drove, started driving for Randy uh, in 2009. Uh, it's a big difference. I mean, you go from a high-speed track to where you're not using a lot of brake, you're always in the gas. To try to go somewhere that's stop and go like Heartland Park, there's a, a huge difference in driving style. Uh, one thing that really helped me out is back in 2003 and 2004 when we were racing at Thunder Hill, they kept that track super, super slick. It was dry. It's always right around the bottom or one groove up off the bottom. So it uh, it helped us with having that background when we went back to a stop and go track. But uh, these high speed tracks are fun. I mean, whenever you can get out there and get after it, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, modified is kind of its own beast. You know, you got the uh, same tire that I've been on since day one. Uh, you just got like 350 horse more. So it, you got to drive them completely different. I mean, you drive like there's a egg under your throttle pedal at all times. Um, just trying to keep the car hooked up is the biggest problem that it has been, you know, since day one in a modified. So, um, you know, they're fun, but they're they're definitely a challenge, especially compared to a car that's underpowered uh, and over traction. But last year we didn't race here very much. We came and raced John's car right at the end of the year or right before they flooded out last year. Um, it's great to get back here. Just the fans, the facility, everything's awesome. Um, just to race here on a Friday night. You know, isn't like going to any other track in, in the Midwest that I've been to. You gonna you go down to Lucas Oil. We went down there a couple of weeks ago. That that place is awesome. Also, you know, it's something else uh, when the fans really get into it uh, and enjoy the racing like they do here and down there. Uh, it makes it more fun. You know, since day one when I was driving uh, for ourselves for my dad, you know, he won a lot of races when he drove. So it made it pretty easy to go back and talk to him and and get notes from him and then when we were racing the modified you know I was still talking to him and coming over to John it's pretty good to be able to get three guys together talk about it plus I get a lot of advice from Ryan Reuter uh, call him talk to him every week uh, can't can't thank him enough for all the advice and uh, help he's given us this year and uh, having somebody like John and dad and and uh, Ryan to help us out that's a huge thing everything with John I mean if, if if you'll sit back and you'll listen to him you listen to the stories that he's had in the past you can learn anything from him. He'll tell you. Uh, he's a great guy. Like I say, if you just sit back and listen to him, he, he's got uh, some great stories, and there's something to learn from everything. Nick Benninger had a very interesting last Friday night at Lakeside Speedway, one that he'll not forget. He had his heat race virtually won until coming around for the white flag had an engine go bad. Miraculously, they were able to fix it. He started 15th in the A feature, charged as high as second until the final lap when he shredded a tire that placed him back to fourth place. But that win is coming right around the corner for sure. When we come back, we're going to visit with the legendary Terry Bivens from Heartland Park, Topeka. That's all coming up next on Racing Boys TV. Don't go away.
Next to your car's engine, your transmission is the second most important component of your car. If it's not properly maintained, your car may not shift properly. By adding Lucas Transmission Fix to your transmission, it cleans and lubricates sticking valves for proper shifting, renews worn bands to stop slipping, stops mo seal leaks, will not void new car warranties, contains no harmful solvents. Lucas Transmission Fix. It works. Welcome back to Racing Boys TV, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet here on Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports. I'm Scott Trailer out at Racing Boys HQ. This next driver that we're going to talk to is a guy that I grew up watching at I-70 Speedway. One of the great drivers to ever come out of Kansas City area. He made it down to NASCAR, nearly won the Winston Cup Rookie of the Year title in 1976. But after taking 30 years off in retirement, Terry Bivens decided to come back and drive an A-Mod out at Lakeside Speedway. After a few years of that, he takes a year off, and now he's back driving a B-Mod at Heartland Park, Topeka. Kirk Elliott had a chance to catch up with the legendary Terry Bivens. A guy called me in Kansas City back in 06, I guess, 206. I wanted to know if I'd drive a car if he built me one. So I thought about it about 30 seconds and said, Hell, why not? I hadn't, I hadn't been in a dirt car, I think it was 30 some years, 32 years. And uh, they built me a Grand National and, and it had some, some things wrong with it when I got it, but it, we finally got the old car working really pretty good. It had some good success with it. That's the thing, as much as I love racing and enjoy driving the cars, I mean, that was my life for 14 years. I raised my kids basically racing cars. It was too tough for me to go sit in the stands and watch. You know, so I just didn't go. I just bought a bass boat and whenever I had some free time, I'd go find me a lake and try to catch fish. The cars are what's different. I mean, the, the, the pavement cars are really high tech. These new dirt cars, even these B mods are a lot more high tech than stuff we used to run back in the 60s and early 70s. But actual racing itself, the, there's good guys and there's always a few guys that has a little trouble getting their car to hold the line. I mean. That's the way it's been forever. And what I found since I come back to racing, the same basic things that make a car go in a circle on dirt, it still works today. The same stagger, uh, springs, shocks, air pressure, things like that. You gotta get them all tuned up and, and your car will handle on dirt just like it did 30 years ago. Well, they got power steering. I never had a car with power steering until I got in that one in 06. I mean, I, we used to run 500 laps at Bristol with no power steering, no cool suit, no nothing. But I, I love these cars. They got aluminum bodies, they're easy to fix. Uh, you can need to work on the frame or the chassis, you just junk about 35 rivets, take the whole side off, get in there and work, pop rivet back on, you're ready to go. Yeah, they're a lot better than the old steel body cars we used to do. Yeah, I, I was really fortunate. My goal this year was to finish in the top 10 in points. And if I got really lucky, win a race, by golly, I did. I won me a feature race, and I'm, I'm up to, I was second in the points and I had two bad weeks in a row, and I'm in third to points now by one point. Uh, and my goal was to finish in the top 10 in points. So if I can finish in the top five for me in points, that'd be a real plus. I mean, I'm 69 years old. I mean, just face it, I, I shouldn't really be, do, shouldn't be having this kind of luck, but I'm just a lucky guy. Myself, personally, I, I will drive one as long as I can crawl in that little window and as long as somebody will give me a ride. I'm retired and I'm not gonna, I just can't afford to spend any of my money on race cars, but if somebody, as long as somebody will give me a ride and I can still crawl through that little hole over there and make a decent showing. I mean, if, if it gets where I go, I'll know, I'll be the first one to know when I can't get one around. And when I know that I'm, too far behind it and causing problems, that's when I'll park it. Uh, the other car is my car owner. That's Jay Bailey. He owns Bailey and, and uh, Sons Motor Company over in Osage City. Greatest car owner you ever seen. Uh, he's actually a great guy. More fun to be around. And he takes care of the, pretty much the, the expenses on his car and on my car. And then I pretty much do all the work on them over at my shop. And, I built ramp overs for his trailer this winter and, and just, he's got three young kids and he was going home from his business, going down to his shop, working till three o'clock in the morning, getting up and going to work. And now he gets to spend a lot of time with these kids and they've been going to things, they can get to bed at night. 
It's, it's a win-win for both of us. He gets to spend time with his family, take care of his business, and I'm retired, so I got all day to work on the cars in the shop. I got my shop air conditioned, so it's not all bad. The love of my life. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, without her in my life, my life would have been a, a waste. I mean, she's supported me through all these years. When we were fanny broke, didn't have a dime, it never mattered. And I was gonna even quit racing one time because we lost a bunch of engines, three in a row, and wrap broke. She wouldn't hear of it. My Uncle Ralph come to help me and we took off. So she's my best supporter, my very best. I love her with all my heart. Well, there you have it, Terry Bivens, one of the iconic drivers that had cut his teeth here in the greater Kansas City area, especially out at I-70 Speedway. And it was great, I know, as a kid to see him make it down to Winston Cup in 1976. But Kirk, uh, he's still a pretty good driver in these B-Mods. And how about that vintage 1970s era Winston Cup fire suit that he's wearing these days out? And one win already this year in that B-Mod class. Terry, my friend, get a newer fire suit. Be safe, my brother. All right, that does it for this week's Racing Boys TV. For Kirk Elliott, I'm Scott Trailer. We'll see you next week here on Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports.